questioning our own reality is something that we have done a few times here on the channel. From asking if our universe is a matrix style simulation to questioning the existence of other realms. Ideas on what our universe is and what others are out there along with the different dimensions that could be possible is a fascinating topic. There is science available to support these theories, fields such as string theory and mirror universes to name a couple. But what if today we are living in one of these parallel levels of existence? What if CERN has created a new universe? Welcome to IF, videos on mystery and history. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss a video again. The concept of parallel worlds is nothing new. For centuries authors have penned stories that propose different realms and levels of existence, all with different attributes and strange properties. Television shows like The Outer Limits and Twilight Zone to the modern classics like Stranger Things all use the same idea, a parallel world hidden behind our own. Even the media monster that is Marvel is building a multiverse. The idea that the worlds are hidden just out of sync or behind our own sounds like something which could only exist in science fiction, but it is true. The science of parallel worlds has just moved forward with the idea we are living in a multiverse. This new discovery proposes that we are part of a larger multiverse. This multiverse comprised of a variety of physical phenomena featuring multiple big bangs, space bubbles and maybe even an alternate version of you. A study carried out by British astronomers has been looking into the cold spot. This is an especially cold region of space. Observations made of microwave background radiation dates this area of space to the earliest beginnings of the universe some 13 billion years ago. The area was first found by NASA in 2004 and it's an unusual place. At 1.8 billion light years across it doesn't comfortably gel with the existing cosmological models. One explanation is that it simply doesn't exist, being just an illusion created by the expansion of the universe. The other is that the data proves this cold spot might be the first evidence for the multiverse. With this new idea, is there any way we could or have accessed the different planes of this multiverse? This is where we introduce CERN and the Large Hadron Collider. CERN is the European Organization for Nuclear Research. They study the structure of our universe and matter. They use the most cutting edge equipment including the Large Hadron Collider, the world's largest particle accelerator. In a recent article from Disclosure TV, a young boy of genius intellect has made the claim that this facility has created a new universe. In this reality, he says there is free energy a unified field of consciousness and access to superhuman abilities and the alternate reality version of you. This 13 year old explains his ideas to all of those whom have the IQ to understand. Max Laughlin isn't your ordinary 13 year old, he is said to be the smartest teenager in the world, having created a device which could provide energy for free to the whole planet. and he stumps many with his ideas on alternate realities and the nature of the universe. The boy's theory of CERN having destroyed the universe and that we now live in the parallel universe that was closest to us. He has explained his theory in a video and it's mind blowing. Hi, uh, I'm Maxwell Lawhen uh, and I am a physicist, inventor, entrepreneur and well I guess change maker. Uh, I'm 13 and I feel like I can change the world and I've already started my positive impact on it. So aside from inventing uh, a whole bunch of different stuff that 
probably won't matter now, but my most recent thing, which has gotten me a little bit of attention online, is my energy device, where I extract electromagnetic energy from everything around us and convert it into electrical energy. In other words, a stream of unlimited energy. So, you know, dimensional realities, I'm not sure if we can prove that yet, but we do know that there are other, that there are other dimensions. Okay, how do you know that? Well, there's an infinite number of numbers, which means there's an infinite number of frequencies that we can calculate. And if there's an infinite number of frequencies that we can calculate, that means there's an infinite number of frequencies that uh, mass can take. And if mass can take an infinite number of frequencies, there must be an infinite number of dimensions. Or if you're one of those string theory guys, you can there's 10. Or if you're an M theory guy, you say it's 11 dimensions. But as of right now, I'm beginning to question string theory and M theory for the fact that I believe that there are more... I mean, mathematical dimensions, yes, I'm actually quite aware of that. But then again, if imagine we're looking at this from a fourth dimensional perspective, we can always go up one dimension from there. We can't say that there's a limitation. In other words, we know that there's dimensions below us, but we've never even gone into negative dimensions even. And to even contemplate the fact that if we were at the top of the dimensional scale, there'll have to be something above us. In other words, if you're at a top of a dimensional scale, we have to have some sort of limitations, right? Everything does. And if that has limitations, then it opens up an entire new set of dimensions and then you know what happens when they're at the top and then they're at the top and continuing on and on forever I guess <laughs> yes every time uh, an electron moves an atometer or less than an atometer a millionth of 100 millionth an infinite Google Plex of an atometer around um, uh, a, nucleus. An, a, a nucleus or uh, maybe just floating around in the universe anytime anything moves any bit you're shot into an infinite number of parallel universes in which could happen and, and so there's somewhere infinity down the line right now from the original universe constantly shifting closer and farther away from it so yes dimensional theory and eventually we have you know a singularity at the beginning of the universe that is energy and then you know eventually that begins to slow down in vibration due to entropy or some other law of that sort and then you know first you get photonic light and then that slows down and then we get matter and then that slows down and then who else knows what comes next we have gravity and then we have time you know all coming in at one sense and i mean does that sound like origin story to you it kind of does a little bit to me but you know maybe that's just a coincidence uh maybe these philosophers or unreliable monks, we call them, that lived up in the mountains and wrote this weird book that doesn't have any factual evidence behind it. Maybe they were quantum physicists ahead of their time, and maybe they're just trying to tell people, you know, who lived a crazy long time ago, that there is an entire new quantum world out there. But, you know, education wasn't too good back then, so I guess they had to simplify intense quantum physics to something that a five-year-old can understand. In certain parts of the Bible, you can get literally, if you convert the letters to numbers, speak a little louder. The uh, Fibonacci sequence, if you invert, of course. Um, but in certain important parts of the book, you'll take certain parts out and you'll get uh, numbers, which seem random, but they're actually frequencies of resonance that line up with what's called the Fibonacci spiral. And the Fibonacci spiral is kind of weird for the fact that it's called literally God's thumbprint, which is a little bit weird considering that we have spiral galaxies, spirals on our thumbs, spirals in our ears. Literally, almost every organism on the planet or object we have found has had some sort of reminisce of Fibonacci in it. And I don't know, it's called God's trademark or God's thumbprint, but. Um, a lot of people think God is, quite in the biblical sense, a guy sitting up on a cloud who controls uh, the universe, frankly, and has created all life. But uh, my definition of God is not like that. I don't believe God is a person or entity. Uh, God is just another form of energy. Well, actually is energy. Himself, well not even himself, itself. For the fact that um, you look at the Bible and other really, you know, awesome but extremely vague and unreliable sources in religion uh, that you know hold these sources that we find and facts that we find or so-called facts that we find and really a lot of people think it's just about faith um, but if you relate the Bible to quantum physics and apply most of the laws actually in a less of a figure sen figurative sense but more of a literal sense and replace it with things like the universe, uh, you'll, you'll eventually find out that it explains in-depth quantum physics, 
quantum physics and astrophysics um, experiments and theories. Well, maybe not theories because maybe now they're proven. Who knows? Maybe the Bible isn't a story of something that happened on Earth, but maybe a story of how our universe began. For the fact that, honestly, I don't really buy into the literal biblical sense. Like, you know, God is literally a guy who looks like us, who sits up in an alternate realm that's in our clouds and, you know, watches over all of us. But I guess he could say that he's an energy form that created all, is all, and is everywhere and nowhere at the same time. God, or energy, lives within us, through us. So, if this theory is correct, we know that we are part of an infinite parallel of universes. This universe is in a constant state of creation and destruction. Overseeing, or at least existing in these realms, is God. He then goes on to say that if there is an infinite number of parallel universes, there may be a universe in which God doesn't exist, or one in which God is even more powerful. The boy gives us an example saying, God is capable of creating a stone that cannot be lifted. If this is true, then God himself wouldn't be able to lift that stone. But on the other hand, if God is all-powerful, then perhaps he could lift it, as he could do anything. This is where we hit the paradox of the unliftable stone. This paradox reflects the universe. If the universe or multiverse exist, and they were created by an all-powerful being, who could have created that being? Do you think that we are part of a multiverse? Do you think that we have shifted our dimension? Is this an explanation for the creation of our cosmos? What other theories could explain the evidence of parallel dimensions? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy what we do here on the channel, please hit that subscribe button, like and share. You can find us across social media by searching We Are If. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.